Hello to all of you. This is Dr. Tawal Mehta and today we are going to talk about modeling the variants that is arch family in EVUs. In conventional econometric analysis, the variance of the disturbance term was considered constant over the time. However, it was observed that in mainly in financial series that, that this variance does not remain constant over the time. It exhibits a period of usually high volatility and low volatility. In other words, we observe that the large changes in stock seem to be followed by other large changes and vice versa. This phenomena was analyzed by financial analysts and it was named as volatility clustering. It is very clear in such cases that the assumption of homoscedasticity or the variance remaining constant over time is, is violated. And in such instances, it is, preferable, it is preferable to examine the patterns that allow the variance to depend upon its past. The first model was prep, uh, proposed by Angeli, Robert Angeli in 1982. And he gave the concept of autoregressive conditional heteroscedasticity. After this, after this, lots of arch variations have came into the existence, which includes GARCH, E-GARCH, T-GARCH. The autoregressive conditional heteroscedasticity model was designed to improve the econometric models by replacing the assumptions of constant volatility with the conditional volatility. Angeli and other works on Arch model recognize that the past financial data influences the future data. And that is was the whole definition of autoregressive. The conditional heteroscedasticity portion of Arch family simply refers to the observable fact that the volatility in the financial market is not constant. Or, in other words, the present volatility in the stock market is because of the previous volatility. If we consider the simple form of the ARCH model, yt is equal to alpha plus mu t. Normally, we assume that a mu t, which is the error term, is independently distributed with a zero mean and constant variance sigma squared. Here, we don't have any time element involved. This, this you can use when sigma, is con sigma squared is constant over the time. But what to do when sigma square is dependent on time? So there comes the R model. Angeli's idea starts from the fact that he allows the variance of the residual sigma square to depend on the past history or to have the heteroscedasticity because the variance will change over the time. Remember one thing, to use the arch or GARS model, it is necessary that there should be the presence of heteroscedasticity in the residual. One way for allowing is to one way of allowing is to have the variance dependent on one lakh period of the squared error terms. You can see here yt is equal to alpha plus mu t. This is a mean equation. Now I'll say that my present volatility or the variance sigma square t is equal to lambda 0 plus lambda 1 mu square t minus 1. This is the basic arch 1 process. So if we consider this equation, if lambda 1 is equal to 0, the error, error variance will become homoscedastic. It is necessary that the coefficients of the equation should be positive because the variance cannot be negative. So the number assumed here is lambda 1 should be between 0 and 1. If we specify R1 model again, then yt is equal to alpha plus beta xt plus mu t. The second equation is ht is equal to lambda 0 plus lambda 1 mu square t minus 1. Now the ht is simply replaced by sigma square t in all the theoretical models. The arch 1 model assumes that when a big shock happens at the time period t minus 1, it is more likely that the value of mu t will be as bigger, will be also bigger. This is when in other words, when mu2 minus 1 is large or small, the variance of the next in innovation, mu t is also going to happen large or small. The estimated coefficients of y1 has to be positive for positive variance. Now, how can we generalize the RP model? Let us see. Now, instead of mu square t minus 1, if my present volatility is dependent on, on more than one time period, so I am also including mu square t minus 2, or extending up to t minus q, then we will say it is a generalized arch p model. Now, how to carry out this analysis in EVUs? Let's see. I'm having the series which is returns. I'll click on it. View, graph, 
click OK. And you can see here that this return, this series is having the volatility clustering. Let me try to explain this on my slide. You can see there is a strong evidence of volatility clustering which is happening. It means that the volatility is not constant over the time period. So volatility is not constant. So white swings in the squared residuals can be taken as an indicator for underlying the volatility in the squared residual figure. The cluster of periods when volatility is high and the cluster of periods when volatility is low can be, so, can be seen in the previous graphs. This seems that the cluster seems to be autocorrelated. When volatility is high, it continues to be high. When volatility is low, it continues to be low. Now, how we can carry out the analysis of squared residuals? Let's again go back into e-views. At present, you can see that there are no residuals which have been generated. We want that we generate the residuals. For that purpose, I'll run the equation. Quick estimate equation, returns, click OK. No coefficients was specified. OK. Uh, I'll specify C as constant. Click OK. I got the graph. I got the equation. You can see here. Now you just see the residuals have been generated. Just a minute. You can see here the set residuals have been generated at the fag end. Now I will save this residuals somewhere. So generate resi 01 is equal to resi. I'm storing this residual somewhere so that I can use it for my purpose. Now, why I cannot directly work on this residual? Because when every time when I'll run the model, this residuals will change. So that's the reason I will have to create the new series with the name of Resi01. Then I'll generate the square of it. Simply, we are trying to use the arch model where we had taken the arch, we had taken the square of the residual. So now I'm saying generate square Resi. 0, 1 is equal to resi 0, 1 square of 8. And I'll get the new series which is square resi 0, 1. This is the graph of the original raw data. Now I'll be generating of the residual square of residual. Double click, open, view, going graph. Click on line and symbol, click OK, and you have got the graph of square of residuals. Let me show you the command line which we have run on the Word file so that you can see it properly because here the font size is small. So this is the command which we have generated. Generate resi01 is equal to residual. Generate square of resi01 is equal to resi01. Whatever series which I have generated here, it's square. Now I'll copy this in my slide and let's try to interpret the results. So our assumption that the variance is constant is violated. You can say the homoscedastry assumption is violated. So sigma square is not constant over the time. So if we introduce the heteroscedasticity in the model in which now my variance is dependent on time. So sigma t1 square, sigma t2 square, sigma t3 square, sigma t4 square, sigma t5 square. Now we will have to test that is there any presence of arch effect in the model or not. We already know that this is a mean equation and this is a variance equation. Null hypothesis is lambda 1 is equal to 0. That is, residuals are homoscedastic. Alternative is residuals are heteroscedastic. Now, we want to detect the presence of arch effect in the model. So, I'll go in estimate equation. I'll write down returns. C. Returns minus 1. And enter. 
I got the result. Now I will carry out the heteroscedasticity test. So for this purpose, I will go in view residual diagnostics heteroscedasticity test. The desirable thing here is the presence of heteroscedasticity. So click OK. Click on arch effect this time. Make sure you click on arch effect. Click OK. You've got the results here. I will simply copy these results into the Word file to interpret properly. Control A, copy. Now we will have to see these two values. One, this, this p value and this p value. The null hypothesis is residuals are homoscedastic. Alternative is residuals are heteroscedastic. So as the p value is less than 0 0.05, so we reject null hypothesis, which means that residuals are heteroscedastic. I am talking about this line. So our interpretation is from this. First. Second, the equation which we have specified is sigma t square lambda 0, lambda 1, and mu square t minus 1. Our null hypothesis is lambda 1 is equal to 0. Residuals are homoscedastic. I am talking about this line. Alternative is residuals are heteroscedastic. Now, we will have to go in this and you will have to see the coefficient as well as the p-value. The thing here which we have to observe is p-value is less than 0 0.05 and the coefficient is positive. It is between 0 to 1 which is desirable. So here as lambda 1 is 0 0.132 which is significant as p-value is less than 0 0.05. So there is a presence of arch effect. Now we will have to run the arch model in AVOs. For this again I will go back in estimate and this time I will activate the arch model from here. It will form the equation on its own. To carry out just the arch model, make sure that you, can, you make the Garch effect equal to zero. All the options, keep it on default. And click OK. You got the answer. Now let me copy this result in the word file to interpret. Now we will have to remember that this is your mean equation. And this is a variance equation. It has been specified clearly in your model also. This is a variance equation. So if you see the coefficient of constant, it is 0 0.0041. Now the mean equation is equal to returns is equal to 0 0.004 into 0 0.075 returns minus 1. This means that irrespective of any volatility, you will get the mean return of 0 0.0004. If we talk about variance equation, ht is equal to lambda 0, lambda 1, u squared mu square t minus 1. So ht is equal to 0 0.00. This is basically e raised to minus 5 and 0 0.612 mu square t minus 1. So this is a variance equation. It gives a variance of the arch model. Volatility which is having a constant plus a component. So there is, there is a constant volatility plus a volatility which is a time dependent which depends on past error terms. So arch effect mu square t minus 1 is statistically significant. You will have to see the value of p. This is significant. So mu square t minus 1 is statistically significant as p value of the residual minus 1 raised to square is less than 0 0.05. Remember, your lambda 0 is greater than 0. Lambda 0 is greater than 0. And lambda 1 is between 0 and 1, which is quite desirable. Now, if I want to forecast the variance, I'll be using the equation, same equation, ht is equal to 0 0.00007 plus 0 0.1612 into bracket rt minus the constant square. Basically, mu t here, the rt minus mean rt square is the estimated error in time t and can be used to obtain the estimated conditional variance. Now, let us generate the conditional graph of the variance. So, view graph, graph, graph conditional variance. Click okay and you got the results let me take these results into the ppt so that i can explain the things nicely so the plot of conditional variance is stable over the time you can see here now this is the graph of the raw series the basic series both the series are coinciding with each other 
you can see here one two three four five the next thing which i want to do is the, to forecast the variance so for this i'll go in estimate activate the equation again and this time i will press forecast so click here on forecast will be forecasting for the entire series at presence on the whole data make sure dynamic forecast is on click ok you can see that the forecast of variance is constant over time which means that the stock is less volatile and so investors does not have any risk of losing the money you can see here forecast is constant let us go back and do the subsetting on the sample so forecast and this time I'll be changing the time period. I'll make this as 1999. Click OK. You got the results. Now here also you can see in the subsetted sample the variance is constant. Let us go back on forecast. Make sure now you activate the static forecast. Click okay you can see that the blue line is between the two red dotted lines and therefore still it is desirable the variance is constant you can again go back and forecast make this in change the time period between you can only on subsetted sample you want to check the forecasted static forecast i want to check the static forecast click okay so here again the blue line is between the red dotted line for more videos on econometrics kindly follow my channel you can subscribe my channel you can follow me on linkedin and twitter